Hello there everyone, my name is Nathan Birch. In this video, I'm going to go over um, an example of this personal assignment for lesson three. Uh, this one should be a shorter video than last week's lesson because we've already pushed to Heroku, so I won't have to worry about any of that today. Um, I'll just show you guys a little bit of how I set up these routes. I won't show you the actual routes, but I'll show you, I'll show you guys how I set those up. Um, and then how we can test them, and then I'll show you my working code uh, on Heroku. And I'll show you this rest file as well, which will probably look really, really similar to yours. Um, so let's go ahead and go into this. So I'm going to come over here and this is what my rest file looks like. Now notice where this is in my project. There are a couple of things. So this is my project right here, right? From server.js all the way up to here. Now there are a few things in here that are really just for development purposes, right? Routes.rest is for development. Uh, the readme, the contacts.json in case I want to just repopulate my database if I delete everything. I don't need that here. Um, none of my files in here are using it. Uh, the prettier.rc or prettier RC and the ESLintRC files um, are both for development. I'll show you guys how I use those here in a minute. And this VS Code one is also for development um, for, for debugging. Okay. Um, the only thing I have in here is just this launch is just the launch.json file. So I do have my local server running. And so if I run this request, you can see I get this data back. Let me show you guys what my database actually looks like make sure this is up to date. So I just have my test database um, or collection um, and then, or and the collection in here is called contacts, which I'm using and, and yours will look pretty similar to this. Each one has these five fields as required by the assignment. Um, and so all these requests should be working uh, on local host, right? Uh, if I go, the ones that I really care about and the ones that you should really care about also are the production ones, okay? So I did push this up to Heroku. I tested it, I made sure it was working. And so if I click on this send request, it goes all the way to Heroku. It takes like half again as long uh, as my local ones do, but I get all this data back, works out great. I can say, yeah, let's get one by an ID. We get Jimmy Carter. Um, I can create a contact. So if I look in here, we didn't, I don't have an Ashley Weaver yet. I keep on deleting her, okay? Um, but I'm gonna hit send request. And look at this response. We have a 201 that gets returned and it says, yep, it was created. Here's the inserted ID. And so then if I needed this ID on another page in the website, I could just use this request to get a contact by an ID and that would give him my newly created one. Okay, but where it's already on wherever we sent this request from, you know, usually the client, uh, we'd have all that data there, okay? Uh, I'll go verify in MongoDB to make sure that she actually was created and there she is, okay? So that works. Let me scroll down. Um, Sarah Birch, I'm going to change some of her data. So let's look at what we have there for her. All right. So right now, Sarah Birch, her favorite color is blue. And that's her birthday. And that's her email. I'm just going to change a couple things in here. I'm going to say that it's actually yellow. And she was born in June. And we'll just say Sarah B at gmail.com. And I'll send this put request. Okay, there's the response, 204, no content. I don't really have to send back any content. I already have the ID of the user if I want to display anything for the user. I already have all the updated use or all the updated data. All I want to know if it's a 204 or a 500 or a 400 or something, right? I just want to know that it that it succeeded. So if I look back over here, let's see if her favorite color changed and all this stuff changed, right? Uh, one thing I want to point out here, well, I guess I'll show you guys that one when I get into the code a little bit. Um, and then delete... Uh, let's go ahead. I'll delete Ashley Weaver again. So let me copy that ID and I'll replace that for the ID here and I'll hit send request and same thing, right? We just get this 204, no content. I don't really need anything after this. Um, I just want to make sure that it was successful and that's what that 204 will tell me and Ashley's gone. Okay. So all these requests are working, um, both locally, which really doesn't matter and on Heroku, which really does matter. Okay, and this is my routes file. Um, this is the majority of what I used while I was testing. Um, and then I was able to push everything up. Okay, server.js looks pretty much exactly like it did last week or in our last lesson for lesson two. Uh, none of this really changed. All of my routes were already right through here. If I click on this indexed routes file, um, this also didn't change, right? I, I was already accessing my contacts routes. Um, if I look at my contacts route, it, it originally, this, this is all we had, right? So I made three new functions in my controller 
and I have router.post, put, and delete. Um, and the nice thing is, if, you, if you've done this already, um, all of this is really similar, right? The only difference is, with a post and a put, we have to send a JSON body, okay? Um, but as far as like using this ID, you know, and getting those, those query parameters and stuff, exact same thing as you already did with the get, okay? Um, didn't touch anything with the DB, that stayed exactly the same. And then, like I said, I just made those three extra functions inside the controller there. Um, let's see. So let me show you guys real fast uh, this stuff. Okay, so I did install ESLint and Prettier as dev dependencies here. And when I set those up, I, I, I set up this ESLint RC file to say what I wanted this to look like. Um, and so with this, if I look at my package JSON, I also have a couple of extra scripts in here. And so I can just open up my terminal where this is running from. I'm just gonna split this. I have my local server running. Um, oh, that's not it. Hang on a sec. There we go. Okay. And so right here, I can just say npm run lint and it'll run it. And nothing came up. That's really good. Uh, one example of an error that would come up here if it was always like const test variable equals awesome. And I hit save. Okay, uh, no errors over here. Everything will run just fine. Um, but if I run my lint here, it'll say, oh, there's an error. Test variable is assigned to value but never used. Okay, as soon as I say like, oh, console.log test variable. Oh my, what did that just do? Test variable and I run my linter, then it passes, right? And so it'll show all sorts of different errors in there. So it's really great to have that set up. Uh, the other command that I can run here is uh, this format. So I can just run npm run format, npm run format, and it'll go ahead and just format my files and make sure everything looks good, okay? Um, so anyways, that was set up. The link was included um, in the lesson page for how, to, for how to set that up. It was just, I just followed this guy right here, okay? Um, okay, so we have these all working. It is published to Heroku. Um, include the rest file for testing. So when you actually submit your assignment, make sure you have this rest file that you've been using. Make sure you actually submit that. Make sure it's in GitHub and it's included um, so that we have access to that. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. But I hope that this video was helpful for you.